There are many things about vampires that boggle the mind and leave much to the imagination. But one thing that has always stuck to their vestige is the idea that they skulk in the shadows. It makes a lot of sense, given that we can only go out at night. But there is one clan of our kind that is almost defined by how they skulk in the shadows. And that is the clan Nosferatu. The name is Old Romanian, if I'm not mistaken, but those who are more pop culture savvy should know it as the name of an old black and white film, one that was revolutionary. And in short, we created that film to make the Nosferatu less believable. See, if someone described a creature to you you have never heard of, you become intrigued and might want to find out more. But if someone said they saw a vampire that looked just like the film Nosferatu, well, you just simply won't believe them. And that is why we made the film. To trick people into thinking it is a social construct. A clan I actually have great respect for, due to how efficient they are at what they do. For in short, they are the best spies of our kind. If there is any information out there that you want, it is almost a certainty that some Nosferatu already knows it, and is willing to tell you for a price, of course. In fact, this spawned a saying that it is safe to assume that there is always one Nosferatu in the room for this reason. See, they are skilled in many assets. Their most famous one being their ability to go unseen and unnoticed, through one mean or another. Their skills in technology too are unmatched, especially amongst our own kind. A lot of them are easily able to hack into military systems if they so wished. I don't quite understand that myself, but that is what I've been told. And in fact, they help set up most of the modern internet as we know it, though we'll get more on that later. They're also incredibly physically capable, some of the best fighters around, and intimidating to boot. If you know anything about them, you'll know the first thing that usually springs to mind when talking about them. That is their appearance. See, they are somewhat cursed by this. Upon the moment of their embrace, they will feel different. A painful and anguishing feeling underneath their skin. The next night, their body will rearrange itself painfully. Organs will move, limbs and features will extend. Sometimes the skin cracks open or boils and legions grow upon them, causing them to look like a unique monster. It is said that not even half of those who undergo the embrace of an Osferatu survive the ordeal. It is something that very much sets them aside from most other kindred. A lot of us walk openly around the kind and command them. We are social monsters, as it has been described. Most of our power comes from our control of them. But the Nosferatu cannot even do this. Walking around the streets would instantly breach the masquerade for them. And to many of them, this ruins their lives. And that can be intentional. See, this is something quite different about Nosferatu culture. While they do, of course, seek out permission to sire like most other respectable members of our society, Nosferatu, on the other hand, know that there is a cruelness to their bane, and so they seek to use that. See, there are some people out there that their outer beauty does not match their inner blackened soul. And so some Nosferatu asked, well, what if it did? It is the reason they are the only Camarilla clan that is known to do what is called revenge embracing. They go out of their way to pick horrible people that do not deserve the things they are given and embrace them, only to make their life hell. They will either die shortly after, maybe even during the embrace, or be humbled by the experience, at least in theory. This is one of the reasons they always have a bit of a, shall I say, arrogant attitude, sometimes very backtalkish. But they do back up their words and are usually trained up if they do survive. 
The culture of the Nosferatu has always been a bit of an odd one. They have always been considered a low clan throughout the past, but one that you should always have some by hand, for they are considerably needed. In fact, through most of their history, they have been ignored, and that's how they like it. But, to get into their history for a moment, I shall start with what most believe the first of their kind is. According to Nodis scripture, the antediluvian of their clan was known as Absimiliad. He was supposedly the son of the King David of Hebrew myth. He was said that he was beautiful beyond belief. Absimiliad's beauty was so strong and described as such that it would make one weep upon meeting him. This beauty did not go unnoticed, for it was the first wife and the last to be embraced by Cain himself, Zilia the Beautiful, who wanted him, and so sought to embrace him. She did so after some time, but left some ever so faint fang marks upon his throat, and a slight gaze upon his cheek that will forever scar what he saw as his flawless beauty, and so he sought revenge against his own sire, and slew her. Cain, hearing the tale of why and how his wife had died, decided to curse Absimiliad with horrific features his clan are known for today, and he fled in disgrace and anger, going far north and east. He embraced many, and all were stuck with the same painful curse that was forced upon him. He stayed now in lands that are known as the Slavic lands today, and faded from history. It is a very cute and poetic story if you ask me, but it is almost certainly a story. Never mind that the city of Cain that supposedly ruled over happened a few thousand years before King David's rule, meaning it was impossible for him to be who he said he is, there are Nosferatu who have been found in the Slavic lands that are as old as Cain's stories should be. In essence, the first Nosferatu was most likely their own thing that just happened to be indoctrinated into Nordist myth, but the story is a good tale, and I will not stop anyone from telling it. But the Nosferatu did get busy throughout all of history, and spread their influence all over the world. Every civilization and culture of the world has an underground Nosferatu presence that can be found, but very rarely do they influence the mortals above not just because it is hard for them to do so compared to others, but also because someone's beaten them to the punch in one way or another. But when sewer systems became commonplace, it was, in essence, a small tunnel system that allowed them to circumnavigate whole cities unseen, with little effort on their part. Every city now, in fact, has a small underground city where they dwell, known as the Warrens, these are small Nosferatu civilizations that can house numbers anywhere between 5 to sometimes 50, though I must admit those are for the big cities. This is their biggest leap in power they have gained in a long time. Instead of influencing the mortals directly, they would simply help the kindred that already did so. With this, they were content and unstoppable. Now imagine what happened when they helped create the internet. For, yes, the Nosferatu helped it spread, and used it to grand effect when they created a small but global kindred-only system known as ShrekNet. And I have to state this because a lot of modern youth ask the same question. No, it is not named after the ogre from the film, but the actor who played Nosferatu in the famous film, Max Shrek. This ShrekNet was a network akin to our own dark web way before that was even a thing, and allowed the spy masters of the world to keep each other in the know and spread information at speeds previously unthought of. The problem, however, is it was found out by members of the Second Inquisition of all people, and so the Nosferatu 
had to eradicate their own network. Something I highly commend them for, for only they knew this was happening, and they did so purely to help others. It did save their own skin in the process, yes, but they weren't on the networks. Many of them are still trying to set up another one, a Shreknet 2.0, but most know it would be found again. See, the Nosferatu are very good at their job, and are very much deserving of respect for this reason. I gladly and often use and command Nosferatu when they are needed, and they almost never disappoint. I recommend them as servants. True, they can be a little cruel, as well as crass at times, I'm sure. The likes of many other clans have wanted them gone as well, the Toreador being the most adamant rivals of theirs. The Nosratu pay the Toreador no mind, and think they're just funny. Indeed, people have tried time and time again with no success. See, the way I see it, they have dug their nails deep into the roots of the world, and you cannot get rid of them. So you might as well stay on their good side, for those who mess with the spider taste its venom. The powers at a Nosferatu's beck and cool help them immensely in the things they do. They are powerful spies, they gather whatever they need, and can easily back themselves up in a fight. For they have the discipline of animalism, obfuscate, and potence. And I shall explain what those are, as well as how they use them. And I'll start with the one they are most skilled at, and famous for. Obfuscate is the power of concealing yourself through many forms. It's sort of like a vampiric ability of illusions, manipulating the mind to make people perceive you differently than you actually are. The most common form of this, and the one the Nosferatu are the most skilled in, is the ability to turn invisible. But they can also use it to make you look like someone else, or as if you're doing something that you're actually not. Your arms are typing on a keyboard, but you look like you're filing your nails, for example. Some use this to make their appear like a normal person, though touching them for even a second would reveal that it is all a facade. And the most powerful users of this discipline can attack and fight while being completely invisible and silent, as well as leaving no trace in the land. A terrifying prospect, I assure you. I have had a fight with one who used their power in such a way. This was years ago, back when spears were the most advanced form of weaponry. I was serving under King Ethelston in the conquest of what is now known as Scotland. I was in a duel with a champion from the other side, another kindred. I met them out in the field, and was confused when I could not see my opponent, only to feel a punch across my face from nowhere. Only then did I realize what was happening, and I grew fearful. To make a long story short, I did win, but if my skin was not akin to bulletproof, I assure you, I would have lost. Another power that they use to grand effect is animalism. This is akin to the powers that sway the mind, the only difference being that it affects animals. They can not only communicate with them, but even command them to do their bidding, such as forcing flocks of bats and packs of wolves to swarm their foe. But the Nosferatu commonly use animals like rats to gain intel. Most won't even notice a rat in the corner of the room, let alone suspect it is in fact a spy learning your darkest secrets. One of my spies uses this power to grand effect. Instead of spying at one person at a time, he sends out swarms of insects to crawl into the walls and make their hives within them, giving them constant and permanent ears that are listening 24-7. Of course, the bug's words are not exactly perfectly translated, but all the important information can be given across, and doing so at 20 locations at once is way better than word-for-word -word secrets from one location. 
And lastly, a power that is always good to back up on is potence, the power of supernatural strength. For a spy is sometimes going to be found out regardless of how good they are, and being able to throw guards with one hand and punch holes in walls is a good way to assure that you can get away safely. In fact, you might even use it to get into places in order to steal things if you don't care if people know you've been there. Some of the best fighters in Kindred history have actually been Nosferatu thanks to this power. The combination of their strength, as well as the fact that they can be hard to notice, and their grotesque and sometimes intimidating appearance helps them in battle greatly. During the times we walked freely, many enforcers of the Nosferatu were hand-picked for this reason. One of my old masters almost exclusively employed Nosferatus to be knights in the most well-made and beautiful armor juxtaposed by their horrific vistage. It certainly kept the peasants in line. Nosferatu are a clan of professionals. Despite how they hold themselves, and how they act, you will be hard-pressed to find a harder-working clan. And although they are disgusting to look at, they are supposedly the only clan with inner beauty. <laughs> at least according to their own lies. Thank you for listening to my tales. I'm the Ashspawn. Feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. But... Till next we meet, Bella Traveller. Have a good day.